Okay, yeah. I didn't I didn't show like the full reaction. I was just watching this. Um I didn't I'm not I haven't I didn't stream any of this, but I just wanted to like say a quick thing, which is like this everything he said up until this point is like the 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 science behind it is legit. It's just what he's talking about is basically the same thing as like you know, you you tell a bunch of kids to draw, and if they enjoy it, then you, you let them keep drawing, and then you take a split them in two groups. One group of kids draws and draws and draws, and, and you let them enjoy drawing for what it is. The other group, you give them a reward when they draw. And then when later on, like, if you reinforce the fact that, like, if they draw, they will get a reward, you then take away that reward, they will stop wanting to draw. And the other group of kids will continue liking drawing. You have to get your your motivation, your reward intrinsically and not extrinsically. It's why so many YouTubers are are like pathetic people because they don't realize that this dream job is only a dream job if you truly love what it is, regardless of the money you earn from it. Um, and I see it everywhere. I see it, I, it. There's a there's a major failure in the in the way society handles the dopaminergic system of like, like my brother, he's, he, I tell him, I'm like, don't tell people, you don't show people your music. Don't send people your music. Oh, let me hear your music. Oh, I make this music. Don't tell people you're a musician. Don't tell people. He goes around bragging, hey, I perform in front of all these people. I did all this stuff. I'm like, that. why would you tell anyone that? Why not just show them? Why, why don't you punish yourself and force yourself to only allow the positive reinforcement that you get from people complimenting your music, you only allow that to, that to happen if they hear your music when it's released rather than when it's not released. Because that'll force you to release your music. And he doesn't listen. He doesn't listen. And so it's like, I see this in my own life. And I'm, this is actually an issue that I'm somewhat passionate about because of my brother. But then... And so what we sort of discover is that... I was skeptical of this. Because, like, in every single conceivable way that I've seen, uh, introver introverts do not have an advantage. Like, at all. In every way. And this is not like a... That could be an advantage for introverts in that they have every disadvantage because that leads to a greater character arc in life. You have, you have uh, room for a great story to be told about how you, you know, quote-unquote, broke out of your shell, so to speak, right? The story that comes with that would be really exciting be really, you know, great accomplishment to, to go from being an introvert to an extrovert. What I think is great advice that you could sh like share with people is how to be an extrovert, how to not be introverted. Because he goes on to say, like, okay, listen, listen. When you talk about what you're going to do, you actually get a positive reinforcement externally. So people are like impressed with what you're going to do. And then something really subtle happens. That's why I tell you, like, if you're gonna learn a language, you're gonna learn something, you're gonna go take some course, you're gonna start a business, whatever, don't tell anyone. Don't tell anyone. You just do it, you make it happen. Show, don't tell. I, I always tell people, bro, the, the, if you study film, the lessons you learn on how to make a good film are literally the, the best possible lessons on how you could live the best life. Show, don't tell. The moment that you get a reward by talking about something, what are you actually reinforcing? The first is that you're reinforcing that talking about stuff gets you a reward. And the second thing is that you're getting the reward without actually doing anything. So what ends up happening is as you talk about stuff. Right, right. You're spiking, you're spiking your reward and you don't, you don't need so much of it for other. I mean, you, you need much more reward from other things for it to actually feel rewarding. Um, and so, yeah, uh, from like a literal sense, you know what? Sure, sure. Exactly what he's saying is 100% true. Um, and if you want, like, if you truly want to like accomplish something, you cannot allow yourself to go down this hole of allowing yourself to feel rewarded from doing other things that don't actually give you that accomplishment, but make you feel like you're getting that accomplishment. It's the same, same mindset behind like why... If you if you truly want you know a healthy relationship, don't watch porn. That kind of thing. You know, every, this is common sense, and everyone knows this. Despite it being common sense, people like my brother still don't follow it. But you know, it is common sense. 
and people who think with a sober mind would would be able to realize this on their own. But my issue is this dude, Dr. K, goes on to say that introverts have an advantage here because they're they're less likely to to end up in the situation or he said something like they're less likely to tell people like they're less likely to have this problem happen to them that they that they go around telling people what you know from a certain perspective I do see it for some people I do see it but here's the thing on a general level right unless you have some data to back this up from on a general level just from a logical perspective I think that's totally wrong because and I'll, I'll say why it's a disadvantage actually as an introvert in this even in this case number one why it's even why it's not an advantage for introverts is because just because you are less likely if you are even less likely but let's say you are less likely to you know end up talking to a lot of people on a regular basis doesn't mean you're less likely to in those conversations where you're talking to people talk about your goals and try to get you know a, a hit out of it right try to feel try to feel that sense of accomplishment try to get a reward from talking to people it doesn't mean that you're less likely to do that it just means that you're less likely to talk to people in general and honestly i would cite that as a disadvantage for introverts because even in this case not just less talking to people everyone knows it's a disadvantage the more and more you talk to people the more and more you realize that there are certain things that you shouldn't talk about with other people, not because they don't need to know, but because you don't need to tell anyone. And you don't learn that unless you are really, really, really properly socialized. And look, introversion and extroversion is, this is common sense at this point, but it blows my mind that people still don't, still talk as if this doesn't, this isn't a thing. It, it doesn't have all that much to do with how many friends you have or how often you go out or talk to people, how often you network and all stuff. It's It has everything to do with where you derive your energy from. I'm an extremely extroverted person. I don't talk to very many people though. It, it's, it's, it actually doesn't have, like, okay, there's a correlation, sure. But you can have a, like, you, you really do have a much stronger influence over your circle and, and how big it is and how how deep the funnel goes and how many people you actually keep around you and people you actually talk to, how often you talk to them, you have much more control over that, like just through your own decision making, rather than a, a simple personality trait. And so, and yeah, yeah, what was I saying? Okay, yeah, look, I I, I know a lot of introverted people who don't get their energy from talking to other people. They talk to other people and they're drained and they're tired and they need their time to be alone. They need time to rest, to cool off, right? To recharge. Yet they, I find out of most people actually, will feel, because they're really sensitive to it, a very, very, very strong reward from talking to people. And I feel like people who are, people who talk to people very little, who who want to feel, who want to t- get that hit from being social. And so they'll reveal everything, you know, they'll talk to everyone as if they're their best friend, if they've known them their whole life, they're at a disadvantage, they're more likely to do it. I feel like people who, who are trying to become more extroverted and, and are going down and, and, and not thinking about it clearly enough. And they think that being extroverted just means being more social. They, they will also be more likely to to open up to people and to reveal this kind of information, which is not like sensitive information. It's just being social, really. It's like a, it seems like totally harmless information to reveal to someone. Um, and, and I feel like they're much more likely to reveal it. And I feel like people who talk to enough people, who talk to them frequently, will have this experience. They will have it over and over and over again. And they'll realize, okay, these are things that I cannot talk to, talk about people with, talk to, talk about with other people, whatever. Bad grammar. English is my first language, but still. Um, and I, I, I just feel like it's beneficial to get through that early, to fail in that regard early, to, you know, your, your 
12 years old, you're 14 years old, 16 years old, and you told people, I'm going to do this big shit or whatever, and you told everyone that, and everyone, and then, then they're like, hey, I thought you were going to do this thing. What happened to that? When, when were you going to do this? Didn't you tell me, weren't you talking all this hot shit about, oh, I'm going to do this and this and this? What happened to that? And I feel like it's good to go through that when, like, earlier in life, so that way later on in life, you don't have to, and you know that if you're going to spike your dopamine, you better be doing it intrinsically, you better be doing it from the exact thing that you want, from the exact behaviors that you want to reinforce, right? And, and he goes on to make the case that, like, just because introverted, it's it's such a shallow point to make, I don't know, I don't think I'd listen to this part, but re-internalize, there, there's... There's, there's, I feel like deeper things you can go into, even with introversion and extroversion. But this, again, maybe I should watch the whole video. But I feel like this is just, it's, it's kind of pandering, honestly. Nobody would call this pandering because pandering is usually done for like political reasons or whatever. But this is like, come on, you know your audience, dude. You know the fact that like you popped off on Twitch. You know the people that you collaborated with in the past. Like, you know your audience. You know what this is. This is this is pandering. Don't get it fucked up. Like, maybe he dives deeper later on in the video, but I think up until what he said right here, I think, like, what he said, like, right here, I don't know, I think it was right here. It was like, dude, introverts don't have an advantage here. They really don't. I would argue that they have a disadvantage. But, you know, if you were to disagree with that, Sure. They don't have a disadvantage. But it is at the very least even. I don't think introverts have an advantage here. I'm just going to put that out there.